Hi you guys, welcome back to my first impression review videos. If this is your very first one, um, this is where I kind of take a look at an entire collection and we look at each individual pattern, the line drawings, fabrication, just kind of the overall design and sort of pick apart the, <laughs> the patterns. But um, hopefully at the end, you get some insight into them that you may not have realized on your first glance. I, I've uh, been getting a bunch of requests to do Berta style, so I'm not entirely sure when this was released, but I'm kind of just getting caught up with whatever their newest release was, and then I'll add it um, to my list of, I, don't, I know we call it big four, but it's more than four, right? It's like big six, maybe. <laughs> um, so I'll add that to the rotation for whenever they release new patterns. We can take a look at them here. Um, from what I understand, this version of Berta, not the magazine, but what's available through simplicity.com are the patterns that you can find in like a Joanne and they also include seam allowance. So it's not the Berta that's really frustrating and confusing and like where all your pattern pieces are printed on top of each other. This is separate from that. So our first pattern is this Mrs. Dress and Blouse. Berta is, from what I remember from doing, um, from looking at these the last time I did a few years ago, is kind of very um, interesting styling, which always makes for a fun first impression video. But um, this one looks pretty tame. So um, it says, how nice that tiered dress and blouses are back on trend. They are so wonderfully feminine, light, and easy to wear. The V-neck adorned with dainty buttons will flatter every decollete. De decollete? Declatel. That's what I thought it was. Declat. Am I confused? Um, not much of a description, right? Like, okay, that's cute. But like, what do we got here? So we have to take a look at them, I guess, individually. It looks like we have a little v-neck, possibly some gathers on a forward shoulder seam, maybe also gathers in the sleeve cap. Uh, three little buttons here, super cute. And then sort of like reverse gathers where there's like an exposed um edge on each of the tiers this one has a long sleeve with elastic at the bottom and i think three tiers ankle length yeah light easy breezy here's the top version so it's the same bodice uh without any tiers added and this one i don't know if that's that same elastic sleeve just kind of pushed up a little bit to make this um almost like um, shoot, what's it called? Doesn't it start with a B? Uh, I can't remember. My brain's not working. Um, Bishop, isn't it? Oh, maybe that's not right either. Um, either way. And then this one also looks like it's got two layers. So this outer layer is kind of sheer, right? Can we see that in the hem? And then there's some kind of something underneath. I don't know if that is a separate garment or if they've integrated them. We've got a bust dart here too. I kind of like the fun little exposed ruffle. There is a kind of full body view. Here's the back. Nice. And here's the back of the top. Right, and I'm just now remembering too that Berta only gives you like limited views. Obviously, easy, easy packer, pattern hacking here would be to make this sleeveless, to make it short sleeve. Obviously, you can adjust the length of the sleeves to be whatever you want. And then you can also, um, you have the top length, but if you were able to do this length here and leave off the bottom tier, you would also have kind of like a knee length dress. So you can do some pretty easy modifications on your own here. All right, and here is the back of our envelope. Um, which is always a little funky to read, but it looks like, what are we looking at here? 45 inch fabric. You cannot make view A from because it's too wide, probably those ruffles. Um, view B is two yards, well, two and an eighth in 45 inch. Okay, I got it now. 60 inch fabric, um, sizes eight to 18, two yards, and then you do need a little bit of lining. Okay, so it is lined, um, which is probably what we were seeing with that sheer fabric. So that's pretty cool. 
I think that for maybe the dress, just the bodice is lined, and then for the top, the whole thing is lined. Okay, and then this means elastic, so you need 18 to 22 inches of 3 8 inch wide elastic, right? Isn't it sort of so confusing how they do this in illustrations? Um, I think that this means interfacing, right? And then this is your three buttons. It doesn't say what size the buttons are. Um, and so these are your fabric recommendations. Lightweight cottons, crepes, viscose, rayon, and silk. Yep, all your lightweight sort of drape. Not, well, some of them are drapey. Some of these cottons are going to be a little bit more stable. So, um, so yeah. And then it gives your length. We don't have any measurements. Um, certainly no finished garment measurements either. So take a guess on that. All right, and back to the beginning. And then our line drawings are down here. Yeah, and there are little gathers in the sleeve cap too. Confirmed, but no forward shoulder. Nice, cute. Next up, we have this little number, Mrs. Dress. This feels very dated to me. I don't know if it's the fabric or the belt or what, but it just feels very early 2000s. These straight cut sleeveless dresses are ideal for a hot summer. Elastic at the waist creates more shape and there is no fastening required since these dresses are slip on style. The sleek and simple look is underlined by panel seams and nearly invisible inseam pockets. Okay, so you've got your lightweight drapey fabric. It is, she said, or the listing said, underlined. So not exactly aligning. I'm trying to see, I can see a facing here. Um, also a center front seam and this um, horizontal seam as well. So that's kind of where our shaping is coming in. Like bust darts, if you will, are kind of hidden within this. And then it all comes into an elastic band. Oh, and then we've got another seam here and then another vertical seam down here as well. Mini length, I would say. Here is a longer length and a more stable fabric. This one is more like a cotton gingham. You can see it's just got a little grown on sleeve, finished with bias tape. I'm not entirely sure what they mean by that underlining. Maybe it means something different. Here's another version. I love so many options. This is what the, so there are, huh, are those like pleats or has that just been pressed really well? And it looks to me like all of these are facings, not underlining. There's the back, which has the mimics the front with the cross seams, same with the back. Or, I'm sorry, the, the skirt. This is interesting. I don't know where that belt came from, but big wide belt. That one has one too. Nobody's wearing it from the front though, and it also isn't illustrated down here with the illustration, so I don't know what that extra panel is all about. Um, kind of throw me for a loop here at the end of this, but um, here's the pattern envelope, and then here's the back. So depending on your size, it goes from 8 to 22. I'm assuming, assuming that these are the same size charts as Simplicity. That's probably not right, right? It's a completely different company. So I don't know what 8 to 22 means. I don't even know what size... I don't know what, what that, I don't know what it means. Um, and then depending on your view, mini, knee, or full length, um, up to three and a quarter yards of fabric. You need some elastic, three eighths inch elastic again, up to 40 inches depending on your size for the waist seam. You'll need some interfacing for all views. And then this is the bias tape that we saw. And then they do give you a finished hem measurement, which is going to be pretty close to your hip measurement. So I guess that helps a little bit. This says it goes up to 60 and three quarters. I mean, that looks well. I mean, it is tapered a little bit. I got to imagine no more than an inch. 
so you can get your full hip there and then your waist is adjustable and the bodice was pretty loose fitting anyway so I mean I guess it's kind of kind of close to something resembling a measurement <laughs> Oh gosh. Okay. And then here are our line drawings, which we've seen. I quite like these seams, especially if you were to take on like a striped fabric um, or something directional that you could like really play around with, or even like color blocking different color chambrays, or it's really popular to um, like the maximalist style, I guess it's called where it's all bold, very colorful, lots of print. Um, you could even do like bold colors, like purple and orange or something you know what I mean that's kind of collegiate but you know what I mean like they're combining all of these really weird colors together um to make a real big statement but you could also just make this little peplum top too I'm at the side um pockets and make a little peplum top all right so that's the next dress next up we have look at this this is where I this is kind of what I meant about um some of the fun styling that they do um, Mrs. Dress and Blouse, is it a striking dress or a chic blouse? Both have deep v-neck and elasticated waist to add shape, okay, to the figure slimming width. The deep neckline of the blouse and contrasting ribbon details lend a touch of girlish charm. Print fabrics will work well for the dress. Yeah, I don't know how many elastic waist dresses we're going to see. I kind of think, you know... Two is one too many. Um, I don't find them to be super comfortable myself. That's probably like a me thing. Um, I get the point of having that shaping, but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't like wearing belts on my waist. If you didn't wear a belt, then it kind of looks a little bit sloppy with just the elastic. Um, and then if you made a sash, then you got that bow to contend with. I don't know. I'm kind of think I'm just over elastic waist dresses. Yeah, I think so. I think that's that. <laughs> but again, that's very, very personal to me. Um, but we have a deep V-neckline, like they said. Not super deep, but it's, you know, deep-ish. Uh, set, set in sleeve. It does come out pretty wide, but it looks like the sleeve cap matches up to the um, length of the shoulder seam, where it's meant to be kind of like a cap sleeve. So that all looks fine. This has a three-quarter length sleeve and knee length. Very cute. Here is the kind of girly one that they were talking about. It is super sweet. I'm trying to look at it without the hat. The hat is giving very nautical, right? Like it's, she's getting ready to go on some kind of yacht, but in leather pants, which is really confusing. So I'm just trying to like take in the top for what it is. But they added this little collar and this ribbon that um, goes through the elastic. Now that... I guess if you do a drawstring, does that feel different to me? Maybe, uh, you know, if I were making it a little bit more casual, more streetwear, drawstring would be okay. Yeah, okay, I could do a drawstring. And then it also has these little like pin tuck sleeves. Um, and then this has a long sleeve with elastic. Um, and then it comes to hip length. So there's the dress again. Oh my, it's shorts. It's Bermuda shorts, leather Bermuda shorts. Okay, all right, well, it's a vibe, right? Like, she's cute. And then here's the back of both of them. Nice. All right, pattern front, pattern back. We have... 8 to 18, so remember the last pattern went up to 22, so I think that must be their quote-unquote extended sizing, and this is their maybe more standard misses, but only two yards for uh, really either one of them, so for a dress, that's not bad. Interfacing for both views, elastic uh, one inch for view A and three-eighths of an inch for view B. I really like a deeper, wider elastic at the waist if I'm going to do it. This little chintzy three-eighths or less, God forbid. Um, not a big fan. Um, I really like maybe three-quarters. I don't know. It just feels more substantial and something a little bit more like anchoring. So if you can... Try that out on your next elastic waist pattern, um, just increasing the width of the casing um, and see if you like it a little bit better too. 
And then one inch bias tape, I think, for view B only. So, yeah, I don't know what, oh, that's the ribbon. Sorry, that's the ribbon. That's the problem when we're using illustrations in like very few words is you're kind of guessing a little bit. But our cotton, our fabrication is cotton fabrics, crepe fabrics, blends, viscose, rayon, definitely all of that. But for this dress, I mean, you could even make this out of like a lightweight wool in the winter. Uh, it's a pretty simple, straightforward design, not much going with it. And if you eliminated the elastic casing, my goodness, your options are endless. Um, the top does need to be a little bit, you know, it, I wouldn't go heavier than a cotton fabric simply because we've got these pin tucks. Um, you kind of, it's like a weird balance for the top because you need it to be structured to like hold up to that and hold up to the gathers and this collar as well. But you also kind of want it to be feminine and floaty. So maybe that's why they were recommending some of these crepes and especially blends. Okay, so here are our line drawings, which you've gotten a pretty good look at already. Look how different B looks when you don't have the hat and the, you know, colors and the black and pink and all that. It looks a lot different. Okay. Next, we have another hat. They're really doubling down on the hats here. Okay, but no elastic waist, so that's good. Um, the feminine dress with a V neckline, gather cuff sleeves, and a swingy skirt features a lace yoke to highlight your waist. A further accent are the seam lines with piping. The loose tunic top with wide sleeves will casually skim your curves for a cool and comfy look. This um, description here also reminds me that this these are being translated from German. Is that right? Berta's German? Something. Um, so that's why some of the the way that the sentences are structured is a little bit funky, but basically we have this um, really beautiful feminine for sure. This would be a deep V neckline to me. You have these lovely underbust seams that are piped gorgeous. Maybe some plating in there, gathers in there to create the fullness for the cup. You have a set in sleeve, I believe, I can't see because of the strap into this um, cuff that's also been piped. And then you have this almost like waistband, just like, you know, shaped waistband, another piped seam. And then this one is uh, midi length. Here is the top version. Now this seems a little short through here. Like the other one cupped her bust beautifully. This one feels a little bit high. Like this needs to be way down here. Um, but this has a full sleeve, no cuff, um, and is hip length. This one's really fun. That's how they styled it. Awesome. All right. There's the back of the long dress. The back of the top, you have an invisible zipper going in through here. I don't know why it looks crooked. See the difference? How beautiful this fits. Are these the same girl? Gosh, no, no, yes. Gosh, I can't tell. They could be, or they could be sisters. But on this one, it's not coming as low. Like, I don't know, even the shape of it looks more angled rather than scooped. So I don't know, I can't imagine there's different, I don't know, something to check at, check into whenever you're going to make this one. Okay, pattern back. Um, wow, three and three eighths for that long dress. Very full, the sleeve is pretty full. And then one and a half for the top. You need interfacing, an invisible zipper, two feet long. Um, for view A, for view B, you only need a little itty bitty one. Hmm, that's interesting. And then a snap, four snaps for view A. Oh, for the sleeve cuff maybe? And then piping, a whole bunch of piping. Again, cotton fabrics, crepe fabrics, blends, viscose, rayon. Lovely. Line drawings again. There's the zipper for the dress, which makes sense. And then they put in a super long zipper for the, are they the same length? Yeah, I guess they're the same length. So when you, I guess with this waist seam, yeah, it does need to be pretty long. 
Okay. Next up, a little knit dress and jumpsuit. Ideal garments to take along on holiday. The straight cut dress and simple jumpsuit are easy to pack. Both have elastic at the waist <laughs> to create a flattering shape and feature practical inseam pockets. A back slit makes them easy to slip on and off and does away with the need to sew in a zip fastener. Okay, these look like knits to me, but maybe I'm wrong. Should we skip to the back so we can see? Yeah, jersey only. Okay. All right, so jersey knit fabrics. Now they say jersey only, but obviously this extends into like um, uh, some of your sweatshirting, some of your, um, oh gosh, what's it called with the loops on the back? French terry. Um, some of those more like in the middle in terms of stretch. I wish they had a percentage on this. But I imagine somewhere around like a 50% stretch would probably be where we are with this. Um, certainly not your rayon super drapey knits and not your stable like ponty knits, but somewhere in between. This one has a pretty wide neckline and I think it has like, you know, on um, baby onesies, how they have that kind of like a crossover kind of thing happening. I think that's what's happening at the shoulder here. Elastic waist. Again, side seam pockets and just a straight skirt um, hits just below the knee. Here's the romper, which the bodice I feel like is good, but the rise of these shorts is way too long. I mean, I mean by a few inches, the back especially, very, very long rise. So um, definitely double check that. There's the back of the dress with a little um, keyhole back opening. There's the romper and you can see still, like her little bum is like stopping right here and then it starts to scoop under for her crotch. Like right around here is probably where the bottom of this should be. This should be way up here. So by a few inches, it looks too long. Certainly will make it very comfortable, but I don't know that that looks the best, kind of sloppy. All right, so here's the back, kind of a two yard wonder for both versions. Um, interfacing, a button, elastic, and then cording if you're gonna you know, do the tie. Jersey only, we talked about fabrics already. The width of the skirt, which is pretty similar to the hip width, um, goes up to 30, I'm sorry, 47 and three quarters. This gives you the length of the skirt, length of the short. Okay. Yeah, even the drawing makes it look really long. I don't think it's supposed to be a drop crotch. I hope not, because it didn't look it didn't look intentional if that was the plan. Okay. Oh, look at this cute little dress. So Mrs. Dress, like coming for Vogue, right? Wonderful dresses and retro looks for special occasions. Both will spotlight a pretty Decolet, I don't know how to say that. I really thought it was decolletel. Oh, view A features long sleeves and view B is made up in two fabrics and has short sleeves. Both styles will require some sewing experience. Okay, so it's a little bit more advanced. But really beautiful, right? I love this little like extra thing and then you've got a little bit of coverage underneath here. Contrast fabric with like a really cool pleated sleeve situation all going into a gathered skirt do we have boning here i'm not sure but definitely a seam and then midi length beautiful stunning jacquard fabric which is how they're able to do kind of the reverse because jacquard is the colors are opposite on the right side and the wrong side so they bought one full yardage of fabric and then just flipped it over for the sleeves which I feel like they also could have done for maybe this part of the bodice or even this little piece here. When you're using jacquard, it's really easy to kind of like, you know, mix and match and do whatever you want. Now this, <laughs> this is a choice. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. My brain has to adjust. Um, okay, so they put a t-shirt on underneath. 
made it out of like a sateen, put patch pockets over the breasts, added a very casual belt, and then it also has this little gathering stitch here. Super interesting. I, you know, not, not my personal style, but I mean, unique, right? Here is our center back zipper, and you can see how the back is designed, kind of just straight across. Same thing with, like, I'm going to call it the more casual version. I don't know what else to say about this one. Um, okay, there they are. Here's the pattern back. So we've got... This kid is very upset at Honey today, if you can't tell. Um, Honey's not trying to taunt her, but... It's, it's happening nonetheless. We have the 8 to 18 size range, 3 yards of the main fabric, and then a little half yard of the contrast. But if you do like they did and just use your card, you can probably just get away with 3 yards in total and then do some pattern Tetris and you'd be fine. But to be double sure, get 3 and a quarter yards. And then lining for view A. And then view B is 3 and 3 eighths with a little bit of lining as well. I think maybe just the bodice is lined. Um, we have a zipper. We have, what is this, bias? But that's also the same little illustration as the ribbon before. I don't know where that goes. Oh, is this the belting? Maybe this is the belting for view B. Yeah, that makes sense. And then we have elastic somewhere, maybe here in the sleeve. And then two D-rings, because this is all for B. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. And look, I really do like this sleeve detail. This version is really, really cute and sweet. I can see it being done more casually. I I don't love the breast pockets, um, but I can see this being done in like a chambray or something along those lines and being a really sweet summer dress without being overly fancy. Jacquard, taffeta, and duchess, which is like a satin. But again, I think you could do cotton sateen, which is like what I think they used here. Um, you could do, you know, any of your sort of like mid-weight wovens I think would be good. All right. Okay, Biscuit found a toy, so she's going to leave Honey alone now. <laughs> All right, we pretty much got a few of the line drawings and the pattern back. All right, next up, this little number. Okay, it looks like some extended sizing coming in here. They're still calling it misses and not women's. So um, that'll be interesting to see how, what the size chart looks or the, the fabric uh, requirement chart looks like in the back. But it's a dress and top. Looking for something special? Look no further. Here is a, here, here is quite a distinctive dress and top. The interesting v-neck paired with raglan sleeves. I love a raglan sleeve. Um, stands out nicely with different fabrics and trim. The intertwined bands are the eye catcher on top. So it's kind of like a little bit of a nod to quilting in a way because you are, you know, kind of piecing all of this together. And then you've got your raglan sleeve, like they said, and then a contrast hem band, maybe some kind of like piping or something's happening in there. And then just comes down to below the knee look how fun that is that's kind of incredible certainly not difficult you know you're just weaving part of it but very creative I never would have considered that and they did this out of a jersey I think but it does have a bust start still even though it's very loose fitting um so that's really cool no one would believe that you made that Back of the dress, back of the top. You know, this might be some kind of like rayon or something now that I look at it this way. Oh, no, just kidding. Jersey knits. Okay. So we've got jersey knits with bust darts. Now, this is the sizing is 18 to 28. So it is women's. It's not misses. Um, and for those of you who sew women's patterns in knits, do they have bust darts normally? Or is it like misses, and if it's a stretchy knit, then th then the you know shaping of the bust comes from the fabric more so than the pattern darts. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay, pattern back. We have 
The dress is two and three quarters with some contrast. So that is quite a fabric hog. Um, then again, this is the extended size range. So you've got to imagine, you know, obviously you're using more fabric for more coverage. And then two yards for B. Um, I'm just dying to know what the measurements for a size 18 are. This says you need a twin needle probably or a cover, not a cover stitch, cover stitch? Yeah, cover stitch machine, interfacing. This is the trim, I think. View A. Oh, maybe it's this little thing here. I don't know what this means. It kind of looks like um, those, that trimming with all the little like pom-pom trim, but it can't be it, right? And then what is this cheese one? Ribbon? This is for A also. And I know it goes in here somewhere. I don't know. Very confusing. And then jersey only. Yeah, I would for sure only use sort of like cotton jerseys for something like this, especially for the dress. But yeah, you just make a ton of these little stringy things and then weave them together. That's so creative. All right. Next is this little number here. Again, this looks to be women's sizing. One pattern, two looks, view A, sleek, sporty, and office appropriate. View B, feminine, fanciful, and just right for a date night. Okay, alternatively, you could make up view A in a graphic print and view B in a solid color. Create your own style. Okay, this one's really cool because we've got this V neckline, center front seam, and then this waist seam are also the openings for your pockets. So that's really cool. And I'm obviously they did this in like a very casual, but nice like chambray with some sheen to it with a cute little sneaker. Love this one. And I think it has a little French dart right here too, which is beautiful. The sleeve looks wonderfully set in a little close fitting through the bicep. So make sure to double check that. Whoa, this is like a completely different dress. So you have the same-ish bodice, no top stitching, no pockets, no sleeves. And then it goes into this like handkerchief hem. Here's the back of the dress A. It does have shoulder darts, another nice tailoring detail. Beautiful. Here's the back of view B. Yeah, so they have similar bodices and different skirts that genuinely are two completely different looks in one pattern. So this is bang for your buck, especially if Berta goes on sale. Do they do that at Joanne? I don't know. Yeah, they definitely. Well, do they? <laughs> no, I'm trying to remember. Um, so yeah, it's your 18 to 28 size range, two and three quarters to three and three quarters yards, depending on the version you're making, interfacing for A, a zipper for, oh, both of them have interfacing and a zipper. And then view B has also, I think this must be bias tape with the little stripes um, for the arm side. And then I mentioned that little dart. There's also a lovely little dart at the elbow and the sleeve here. This is a beautifully like secretively kind of tailored bodice. Um, with a cutie little skirt. I just love this pocket detail. That's so fun. Nice and deep for all the moms out there that like want to look cute at the playground or whatever. But, you know, you need, um, you need like a lot of pocket space <laughs> to be able to hold all the things, all the toys and the tissues and everything else. And then here's the handkerchief hem on this one. So cute. Okay, viscose rayon crepe fabrics, lightweight cotton fabrics. But this one, again, you could go heavier. You could go into the midweight category on this. Imagine it in like a corduroy. So cute. Some kind of suede even. Um, you could really take this into fall and winter too. All right. Next, we have this coat, I believe. Yeah, coat and jacket. Now, I have long been a fan of Berta Style outerwear. I just think they do it like nobody else. It's always really unique, always really cute. 
Um, I have quite a few Berta jackets. Now, have I sewn a bunch of them? No, but I have them because <laughs> I see them and I'm like, oh, I need this. And then I remember how difficult jackets are to sew. <laughs> so I end up staying in my stash. But all right, here we have a classic cut with stand collar. It would look great made up in flannel. Okay, choose an unusual fabric to go trendy as we did for jacket view B. However you go, this will be a piece to wear for years to come. Okay, so yeah, they chose some kind of like, maybe like embroidered linen-y looking type of thing. I don't know, very 3D, very textured. But the design details, they call this a stand collar, which I guess technically it is, but I love how it's sewn kind of not all the way around to the front. It sort of stops and creates this little square neckline. So cool. Hidden closures. And then you've got this like bib layer pleat thing. Um, you've got welt pockets, super nice. And then a very close fitting sleeve cap into your shoulder, which all looks really well fitting. That's one of the things that I gotta say, I haven't commented much on in this entire collection is ill-fitting things. That one crotch really is all it's been. So there's something to say for that, but look how beautiful this version is. I mean, what a stunner. When you have it open, you can really see that kind of squared off neckline, so pretty. They did snaps. There's even like a really cool dart that goes into the arm side here. Um, again, with the welt pocket, long sleeve. I mean, just really beautiful. Obviously fully lined. You can see a little bit of it in the sleeve there. Super, super cute. I want this one. See what I mean? They're just adorable. Look at the back. The back has this little, like, again, with the flap. I don't know what to call it. Like, it's overlay type thing. So cool. I mean, and I mean, the solid, I don't know, normally like prints and stuff, I'm just like, I love for more reason, but this solid really helps all the design details fully, fully shine. You have a two piece sleeve and you can see that this is more of like a crossover overlay, just really freaking cool. Just so, so, so cool. You know what? This is what, this is what I say to myself every single time, like, I'm going to get this. It's going to be one of those fun projects that I can really do a deep dive into. And then I never muster up the energy to actually make it, but maybe one day. <laughs> it's just so cool. All right, here's the back. So it's 8 to 18. Again, I'm dying to know what this 18 means in terms of sizing. Um, view A, which is the long version, is 3 yards. And then fully lined. View B is shorter, so two and a half-ish yards, uh, again, fully lined. And then interfacing and snaps for both views. Other than that, though, no funky notions. Uh, gabardine, poplin, jacquard, Loden fabric. Europeans, please let me know what Loden means, what's, what Loden fabric is. Um, obviously, any of your kind of like bottom weights, any of that mid- weight to heavyweight jacketing kind of fabric would do. But I could also see this being a super cute raincoat without a hood, you know, but you know, something to just keep you kind of dry from the mist of it all. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just so cool and so unique and so different. Um, I think that's why we love Berta patterns so much. Cool. All right. Next. We have another jacket. This is their women's jacket for this collection. Both the coat and jacket are collarless. Panel, seams, and two-piece sleeves complete the look. Wear it inside or outside to always be well-dressed. Um, okay, sure. All right, so as they said, collarless. You have buttons or snaps. I can't tell. I'm thinking those are snaps. So again, when you close it up, it looks like hidden. You can't really see the closures. The lining is peeking out, which is bothering me, but um, you have a patch pocket, it looks like. Yep, patch pocket. And then 
this whole big long panel it's hard to see it goes from here up through the um pocket and then here as well so it's kind of like an outset princess seam it's not supposed to go fully over the bust apex it's like just to the outside of that you can see it really well here and then you've also got a little dart here a little dart here and yes fully hidden closure and this looks more like a top to me than anything so you know maybe in some of the like heavier wait yeah heavier side of mid-weight fabrics like some chambrays some denims some linens um you could make something that's more like a top which is kind of cool and then there's the jacket again cute little outfit cash it up there's the back which also has some darting up here here's the two-piece sleeve and then the paneling for the back this this works a lot like fisheye darts do um creating some shaping which you can see through here really really beautiful any kind of like suiting um you could really do some fun stuff with the i'm going to call it the shirt version oops i forgot the back envelope here we go so 18 to 28 view a which is the um coat up to three yards pretty much fully lined um view b is two and a quarter yards again mostly lined interfacing and snaps for both wools jacquard boucle but again i talked about some a bunch of other fabrics that you could use for that really cute beautifully done i love all the darting that they do at the neckline that's really unique to them also all right here's another little jacket with a fun little lots of fun stuff going on here okay a jacket with an unusual cut it may be a bit of a challenge to sew but worth the time and effort. This is a unique garment you can wear for years to come. The edges of Jacket View B are detailed with fringe, yes, which are quite reminiscent of a Chanel tweed. Okay, great. So, collarless. And then it comes down to this, like, just like a center zip, which is not something I would have considered before, but... I, I don't mind it. It looks kind of cool. I like how this is cut into a triangle. I don't know. It feels like it's super flattering. Like it's like it's giving the illusion of an actual hourglass, right? Which makes you think that that must be what her body is underneath as well. So it's giving a lot of shaping just from only having the zipper go so far. And then they mentioned the interesting seaming. So we've got this little hip curve thing. We've got this little sunshine thing. Here's another seam coming up through here. Yeah, a lot going on with that. This is the exposed fringe that they talked about. So cute. I love how they styled this one with jeans and a t-shirt and some pearl necklaces. So cute. Here's the back again with some of that hip curve seaming, center back seam. You've got another two piece sleeve. Adorable. All right, so one and three quarter yards up to two yards, depending on the view. Is I guess B must be a little bit longer. Um, and then both of them are fully lined. And then you need a little zipper and some interfacing. That's it. And then again, you can see kind of the seaming here. And then the trim that creates that kind of like Chanel vibe. So they are going to suggest jacketing fabrics, wools and blends. B only fabrics, which can be fringed easily. Okay, so it's not actually a trim. I think you're cutting strips of the fabric, fringing some of it, kind of making your own trim, basically. Um, so that would be stuff like tweed, like twill, um, things of that nature, things that fray really easily. Cool. 
yeah, the seaming is really, really beautiful on this. All right, here's another fun jacket. This one is sporty jackets reminiscent of Canadian lumberjack shirts. I am not familiar. Does that mean jacket? Uh, but not necessarily plaid are wonderfully easy to wear and pair with other separates. Use the same pattern for a dress by choosing a slightly longer length and adding a cord drawstring to accent the waist. Wow, okay. That's fine, but they used some kind of like really fancy fabric. So it's that's not matching up with the description at all. But if you just look at the style lines, yeah, it's basically like an oversized flannel. And I think maybe that was the point they were trying to make. But you've got a collar without a stand, so easier to sew, grown on, like drop shoulder, with a sleeve, patch pockets with a flap, and then your button front. Here is a super cool version. This should have been the lead. This is what they should have led with, I think. Um, I like the idea of making it out of something fancy, kind of juxtaposing the casual, you know, shacket, oversized, slouchy look with something really shiny and fancy. But I think this, I don't know, this makes more sense to me. Um, okay, so same details. It's just a different fabrication and a little bit longer. And then here's the dress, which that's actually super cool. It kind of feels like a trench coat that, you know, when the in the movies, whenever the woman shows up to the guy's place and she's got nothing on under her trench coat, it's kind of giving me that vibe which is really sexy obviously um even though it's super casual this is some kind of corduroy so that's also fun yeah it's kind of cool with the eyelets and the you know like they really leaned into the sort of sportiness of it all here's how they fully styled everything super cool right like i don't know if i'm cool enough for that but she looks great very wearable, very like anybody in any kind of lifestyle can pull this off depending on the accessories that they choose. And then you've got like this girl. So cool. Here are the backs. Oh, there's also a little pleat in the sleeve. Nice. Yeah, I mean, this is not like anything else I own, which makes me kind of think I should try it. I also love how this is kind of adjustable and not like super constricting if you don't want it to be because it has those toggles in the front. I mean, obviously I wouldn't wear it with knee-high socks and funky moon boots, but I don't know. I feel like I could pull that one off, maybe. <laughs> um, the pattern back is... Two and one eighth up to three yards. And this is the one where they have two extra sizes. So it's like their misses and their women's kind of sort of overlap. Kind of. Um, interfacing for all views. View A, you need six snaps. View B and C, you need seven snaps. View C, which is the dress, you need that like elastic cording. And then metal eyelets, and then also the little toggles. You know, I've looked at a lot of shacket patterns. I even am in the process of making one kind of work in progress from last fall. This is right up there with one of my favorites. I like how, you know, versatile they made it seem. They're all this versatile though, you know, like you could hack one, that if you already have one, you could hack it easily into this, but um, their creativity is on point. All right. Now we have, okay, a road beach cover up. They're calling it a coat, but it's over a swimsuit. So that feels like a lot. The classic kimono has a long, has long been a fashion statement and affords so many styling options. I'm not sure how I feel about that statement. <laughs> We're just going to leave it at that. With this style and different hem links and sleeve links, everyone can find their favorite. Okay. Um, 
All right, so yes, robe, style jacket, grown on sleeve, big hem band, wide sleeves, front band, and a tie. Again, here it is over something that looks a lot like a swimsuit, so it's kind of odd to call it a coat. I think we should be calling it a robe, but definitely not calling it a kimono that's been a fashion statement. Like, <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know who approved that, but um, nonetheless, this is it in like a little solid. Here's something a little drapey, right? They've got it over like a bodysuit and skirt situation. Very slouchy, very drapey. This is a great study in fabrication. When we say lightweight fabrics, super drapey, this is the quality of that where it falls in really close to your body. It does not stand away at all. And when we say, you know, light but stable or midweight fabric, structured fabrics, you can see how this is completely standing away from her body on its own. Um, just very, very structured. Here it is over a little dress, a little short set, and then this outfit. I don't even know what that is. A skirt, I think. Here's the back. Okay. Yeah, pretty straightforward here. Super easy is correct. They call it super easy. I agree. Um, there's also a YouTube tutorial, so that's kind of fun. And then, so you can see here, there's not a lot going on. Bunch of rectangles. The most difficult part of this whole thing is going to be your neckband. Um, fabric wise, two and three quarters up to three and three eighths um, because it is the eight to 22 size range. And it's pretty oversized in addition to that. Um, big squares, big chunks of fabric that it's taking up. So um, not a lot of pack pattern Tetris because, you know, it's just big blocks. Cotton fabrics, blends, satin, crepe fabrics. I mean, truly just about anything under the sun. Okay. Now, is this the little top? Cause that is so cute. Yes, love this top. All right. A sporty tank top in three different lengths, highlight pretty shoulders. Totally agree. Binding at the edge of the neckline and top stitching with a twin machine needle at the edges of the armholes are easy details. I mean, are they though? <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, fully bound. Uh, I'm guessing they just turned this under and top stitched or cover stitched or used a twin needle. There's a little dark here, which is nice. This one comes down to just about the high hip, I guess. Low hip. And then tunic length. Cute, cute, cute. All right, so this is like a rib knit. You can really see the binding here. That is not easy. I don't know. I don't know why they think that that's easy. That is very finicky. That is very difficult to get super accurate, but okay. And then this has been tucked under, like folded under and then top stitched. Here's the back, the back. All right, there they are. You would also easily keep on lengthening and just lengthen right on down to the floor if you want. You can even make it shorter into a crop top. Very versatile little knit tank top. But again, this, I might be swapping that for a band because that's difficult. But as you can see, you don't really need any notions at all. Just slips on over your head and look at these fabric requirements. This goes up to a size 22 and even for the largest size, three quarters of a yard for view A. So imagine making a little crop top. You can probably make it out of half a yard of fabric. Um, and then only goes up to one and a half for the longest version, the longest version and also the largest size. Um, and yeah, make it into a knee length dress, make it into a floor length dress and add slits at the side. Like, the possibilities are endless with this one. Super basic, but you know, you could crank out a whole bunch of them and have a really cute, fun set of tops and dresses. Okay, 
Now we have a little raglan kind of baseball tee. Fitted tops with raglan sleeves and a shallow neckline. Look youthful and sporty, especially when it's made up in a combination of bold colors and prints. Go ahead and create your own style. Okay, thank you. I think I will. Um, so yeah, your basic baseball tee. They're super comfortable. Raglan sleeve, super sporty, but also I think very flattering. I think it makes everyone's shoulders look really beautiful. Um, this one is shallow, but a little bit wide. So kind of like that bateau neckline. You can see they did use a twin needle to finish off something. I'm not entirely sure what, since the binding is way up here, but um, no darts, nothing. Just plain t-shirt from there on down. Here it is in a color block, and then they added this pretty little patch or embroidered right on it. I'm not sure, but either way, super fun with like an Hermes-esque scarf and then coordinating pants. This is a like cool outfit. Here is kind of a novelty jersey with the girl power and then again with the contrast. Fun. This one wins though. That one's just too cool. Yep. Okay. Jersey knits, two-way stretch jersey fabrics only. Again, I wish they indicated some like amount of stretch. Do the Berta style pattern, like when you go pick them up, like hold them in your hand, do they have that little like stretch guide on the back, you know, where it's like, it must stretch to this point or beyond. Do they have that on those? View A, so remember we're working with contrast here. So we have two listings for each version. So three quarters of a yard for the body and then half a yard for the sleeves. So again, if you've got some coordinating jersey from making baby clothes or I don't know what else, um, anything that just kind of happens, is, even if it's just like white or gray or black, you could crank out one of these with very little bit of scrap fabrics. And then it goes up to a 7 8 7 8 situation with the long sleeve and the long bodice for C. So another great um, stash buster, fabric stash buster. Um, all right, next we have, and I think we're getting close to the end here. Maybe our last few. Yeah, this is an adorable little top or blouse as they call it. Blouses with loose tie collars are right on style this season. Our blouses have a wide fit and offer a choice of sleeve length. Don't hesitate to try out new color combinations. I love how they just gently like make these casual suggestions to us. So very basic boxy top, right? Then they added this little sash collar, which really just elevates it. I love it in this blue and white stripe. So cute. Um, here it is in a bold floral and a longer sleeve. And then the longest sleeve, and this is what I was talking about earlier, when they're combining like red and purple together, that's the new hot trend with color blocking. Like no more pinks and greens, like no more like exactly opposite from on the color wheel. Now they're going like, I don't know where purple and red fall on the color wheel, but you know, the, the color theorists of the world will know why this doesn't look as terrible as you would think. I'm not one of those people, but that's where things are going. On the cool side, I think they're doing like, is it yellow and green, blue and yellow, blue and green? I don't know, something like that. All right, there she is in her cool boots. Stilettos with skinny jean, well, kind of like bootleg jean, and then wide leg with a fun bold shoe. Here are the backs. Again, really straightforward, simple. They're calling this super easy. I don't know what it the how the instructions handle attaching that collar. That could ping it up to like easy, um, but from the looks of it, in terms of, you know, darts and pleats and zippers and stuff like that, it does seem pretty easy. You can see here, no notions. Um, fabrics are two yards for the, for this top up to two and a quarter plus a half for C, which is color blocked. And then lightweight cotton fabrics, crepe fabrics, viscose rayon. Obviously the lighter weight, more drapey fabric you use, the more difficult the construction becomes. 
So start out with this lightweight cotton and see what it's like. I mean, this version was, it was super cute. Like, I would love that. In the store, I would probably buy it right up. Um, okay, yeah, like I said, no notions. So really straightforward little design with a twist, basic with a twist. You guys know I love that. Here we have a skirt, I think. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm still looking for, like, skirts that feel like me. I'm having a hard time with just, like, the pleated skirt into a waistband. Like, I don't feel like that's my jam. So we'll see how Berta handles the skirts. But flared panel skirts flatter every woman. Okay, I'm not sure how I feel about that statement either, but okay. Choose your best length from mini to midi. The elasticized waist ensures a comfortable fit. Pockets in the side seams and a stylish slit are easy details to sew. Okay. So, panel. And I believe, is it elasticated throughout? It is. But this looks flatter. I don't know. We'll have to look at the line drawings. Then you've got the pocket, like they mentioned, and the little slit. Super cute. Here is a drapier version. And yes, it is elasticated all the way throughout. But you can see the elastic is super wide. Again, I'm really loving that wide anchored feeling with the elastic waistbands. And then you've got the panels. You've just got a simple hem. You can see the, the seams are all just pressed open. Big long slit on this one, really gorgeous and blowy. Here's another knee length version is the only difference here. This is how they styled her and her. This is, must be the back. Yep, the backs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing really special about this one. I could probably draft it myself. Um, I don't hate it though. Um, I'm more inclined to go in this direction than some of the other skirts I've seen at Simplicity, McCall's, and Butterick, and all of those folks this spring and summer. So there's something to be said for that. Um, I think they are right in terms of the A-line shape being suitable for lots of body types. Um, yeah, I don't hate it. So that's good. <laughs> Um, all right, we have, yeah, what's the yardage? The little mini skirt is one and a quarter yards, which, you know, we can probably figure out how to do that in one yard, especially if we either eliminate the pockets, right, or just do the, like, do the pocket facing in a different fabric. That's another neat trick that I have. Um, and then one and three quarters for the knee length and two and three eighths for the full length. I mean, it is a full, full skirt. Um, so it makes sense that it would take so much fabric. Elastic, one and five eighths inch elastic, which I don't think they sell that in the States. You either have to get one and a half or one and three quarters. So keep that in mind when you're making your casing. Cotton fabrics, blends, crepe, this goes rayon. Yeah, I mean, obviously they're suggesting these for because it's like a summer collection. But as you go into winter, lightweight wools, corduroys, linens, all that kind of stuff, you could also make it from really easily. I mean, it's just an elastic waist skirt. No big deal. Okay, now we have this fun little number. Again, in their women's sizing, trousers and pants. Gaucho pants or culottes. The lightweight fabrics make these not only comfortable to wear, but also very stylish. A special feature of View B is the front overskirt panel tied at the side seam. Okay. So pants with a little like extra panel that swoops over the center front and ties here on the side. Fun detail. We've kind of seen it before, you know, not super revolutionary. Here's the pant as is, very clean, right? Very simple. The, the crotch on this one, the depth of it looks really good. I know we have a dart here and, and I can't tell if that's a waistband, but again, with the fun colors of this outfit, here's the back. Yeah, beautiful wide leg. Nice deep um, darts in the back. And then again, I can't, I think this must just be a facing on the inside. 
yeah, so again, very, very clean looking situation. I think I like this. In terms of like a pant, I'm not ever going to be somebody who's super into the fly front and the pencil pant and tons of like pockets and zippers. And I don't think that's the kind of pant person I am, especially when it comes to making my own pants. But something clean and simple like this, I think I could get behind that. Maybe that's my new sort of evolution into pants. I did start out as the girly who wanted to make her own jeans. That ship has sailed. So <laughs> maybe we are here where we just get a really good fit with simple blocks, you know? Okay, uh, two and five eighths of a yard for A, and then when you add that extra panel, obviously a whole extra yard of fabric. Interfacing, Invisible zipper. Okay, so there is a zipper somewhere. Oh, it's on the side. Love a side zip. Love a side zip. And then for the super curvy girls like me, I think there are like 11 inches difference between my waist and hip. Um, you can add another dart, maybe two other darts in the back here to really give your waist the shaping that it needs. Cotton fabrics, blends, poplin, gabardine, yeah, all your bottom weights. But for this, you could even go really lightweight and do like something super, super drapey, silky type um, because you have that kind of draping panel happening here. All right, now we have a little slip dress, right? This pattern offers all kinds of options. Make it up in silk for a lingerie look and a cotton fabric for an easy wear sundress on hot days or as a mini dress to throw over your bikini at the beach. Quick and easy. Who could want more from a summer dress? <laughs> um, all right. So without the belt, there is no shaping whatsoever. Right? Okay. So then we have... Is it lined? I don't know what's happening, how this is being finished. And then you got this little spaghetti strap. Lined or faced maybe. This one's really cute over the top. I kind of love the whole modern 90s aesthetic of this look. Not sure about the blue snake though. Oh, they didn't even show her. Yeah, I think it's just a basic 90s slip dress. Let's look at the line drawings. Yeah, and no, it's just interfacing. So it's gotta just be faced, right? Or God forbid, bias bound. It was just really hard to tell. Um, cotton fabrics, blends, PK, but also like they said in the um, listing, any kind of silky type fabric too. Yeah, really simple, straightforward. There is nothing special about this. Again, you can probably draft it yourself, maybe. Um, but they did not provide the U.S. stuff on this one, so I'm not sure what that's about. Next, we have these pants. They brought back that little hat. Which are your favorite culottes? No easy choice. Both have chic styling details. View A features side pieces fastened over in front with D-rings. So very similar to the last pair of pants we just saw, except this one has two panels that meet in the front rather than one that crosses over. View B also has quite an interesting mock fastening and side slits with snaps. Both have a nearly invisible zipper. <laughs> I love that they call it that. Um, concealed in the center back seam. So the zip on this one is in the back. So here is the little panels that come into the front with a little D-ring. This again feels a little bit long. Long in the rise. Um, and then yeah, just your ankle length pant. Super cool, super chic. I mean, they did it in this bold print, but in a solid, all of this detailing would really stand out. And then here's this version. Again, they're like, oh, must be nautical because of all these snaps. Let's give her like a captain's hat, which is a little too on the nose for me. But 
Nonetheless, you do have this really cool detail of it's the same crossover pieces, but instead of it extending all the way down like the last version, it's just a little like cummerbund type of thing with two little snaps here and then a whole bunch of snaps at the side. Really adorable. There's the back, maybe one or two darts per side. There's the center back, nearly invisible center back zip they talked about. So the front, let's look at hers. Yeah, hers looks a little bit better in terms of length. Actually, it looks really good in terms of length. This one, though, might be a little bit long. Again, is this the same girl? I, I genuinely can't tell. Um, so you can even see here, kind of like where the fullness of the bum is like right through here. And then this extends well beyond that. So I don't know why they would make two of the same pattern and one have a way longer crotch length than the other one. No idea. But you can see here, the fullness is here and it kind of stops right here. Maybe a little bit long. Or full through the inner thigh. Maybe that's what I'm seeing. But fun, cool, again, unique design that you do not see in sewing patterns. View A with like the big panels is three yards, which honestly is not that much considering, you, you know, the statement that you're going to be making. And then less than two yards for B, which is, which is great for a pant. Um, interfacing, your invisible zipper, D-rings for A and snaps for B. Cotton fabrics, blends, linen. Um, yeah, probably even going into something a little bit more stable for this. Um, the gabardine suiting, things like that, because you want to hold up the weight of these metal snaps. But super cute and fun. All right, another skirt. Oh, Lord. Okay, this is a skirt. Kind of looks like they just wrapped some fabric around her, but... <laughs> and then it says this skirt may look complicated. Actually, I thought it didn't look complicated at all, but maybe that's me. Um, it may look complicated, but it's super easy to sew. It consists of just one rectangle of fabric. <laughs> The front knot is an eye-catching detail. The stretchy fabric will hug your figure for a perfect fit. A casual and comfortable piece to take on holiday, but just as suitable for the office or about town. I don't know what office they're going into, but this is like, whoop, kind of sketchy territory. Um, yeah, I'm still getting, we just knotted this in front, uh, I mean, especially that. What is this? I don't like that at all. Um, I think I can see sort of maybe how it could be cool, but it's just not the execution isn't coming through like I think they maybe intended. There's the back, okay. Jersey knits, okay. Yeah, they're not gonna give us much in terms of construction. Um, I am imagining it's a rectangle with straps on each side. I don't know though. Now I need to go find this in the store and look at the instruction booklet and see how it's done. Because again, like the line drawings, yes, super cool. I could see that being perfect for the beach or any vacations you have coming up. I don't know about the office, um, but really easy, something to just kind of like slip on and go to and from like the pool or wherever. But the execution of the samples are where we're kind of like, I don't know. Um, and it takes a ton of fabric. It's the eight to 22 size range. Two and a half yards, three yards, three and three eighths yards. That's a lot for like some little swim cover up for sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know. This is the best looking one, I think. Maybe because the fabric is more stable, but she also looks like she kind of like hiked it up a little bit, creating this full ridge, which that is not in the line drawings. The line drawings have it fully flat through here and the only bit of like ruching or folding of the fabric is happening in this area kind of like radiating out like it is doing here but definitely not this like ridge 
So something's not uh, not adding up. This with the little, I'm not even going to say what I want to say. You can use your imagination. Okay, okay. Um, and then this looks the most like the line drawings, but is just not. Like, what is this lump? Is that from the sweater? That's not her bum, certainly. So I don't know. I don't know. I think they were, I don't know. This is not, this is not it. This is a no-go for me. Cute idea, poorly executed. All right, look at these cutie little shorts. Short shorts. Although easy to sew, these pants will be a great addition to your wardrobe. Elastic at the waist, inseam pockets, and pressed creases make them suitable and wonderfully comfortable for many occasions. Wear them in a business setting or about town or for leisure activities. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's just an elastic waist short, right? With some extra deep, like, pleats, side seam pockets, like maybe a one-inch hem. So it's like elastic shorts with a little bit of extra something, which I do think makes a difference. This coloring though is not helping but I do think that it makes a difference I think the rise looks good I think the fit looks good um here they are in a long version in a print that you might think she's wearing pajamas right and it does look like that <laughs> you, you would be right um I think the print's just a little bit too precious but that looks great. Again, the color's terrible, but that style looks great. And the short shorts look super cute too. I don't think there's anything special going on in the back. Although maybe through here, I feel like there's a little pressed crease. Very close fitting on this through the back. So not as loose. That fabric, I would never buy that. Never see that fabric and think, oh my God, that would make super cute shorts. But it really does. I love this fabric as a short, um, but it does feel a little bit like maybe close fitting through here. So yeah, but it's not pulling, you know, these are all still laying super flat. So maybe it's just an illusion. That one looks very well fitting. And then there's the pant. I see where they were going with this, but maybe the coloring of it is a little pajama-esque. She could also just be a little bit more curvy in the bum than this girl. Like she just has a fuller bum, you know. Um, all you need is elastic, cotton fabrics, blends, crepe fabrics. Yeah, I hadn't considered it in like a stable fabric. That would be cute. One yard wonder for the shorts. Hello. Up to size 22. 1 and 3 eighths for the knee length version and 2 and 5 eighths for the pants. Yeah, I mean, it is the elastic waist shorts, but elevated. We've got the same thick elastic waistband. I like these too. Okay, cool. I like that top. Um, all right, so now we've got an apron. We've got some kids' clothes, although super, super cute. Oh my gosh, don't even get me started on her. What? That's so darling. Little Chanel moment or Breakfast at Tiffany's moment. Um, so cute. All of it. Love it. What is this? School cone. What is a school cone? Never heard of that. Anyway, so that's it for the women's wear. Um, nice little collection, right? There were quite a few of them that, that even if they weren't something I would wear, they are definitely creative, unique, not something you find in other sewing patterns. So there's a lot to be said for Berta style and just figuring out how to make it something that you would be comfortable in is really the only challenge. If there's any challenge at all, some of these right out of the pattern, I can see myself you know, right out of the envelope, just making it and wearing it and loving it. So 
yeah, very happy um, with this collection. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I know it's probably been out for a minute, so if any of you have actually sewn any of these, um, let me know what your thoughts were. And yeah, that's going to do it for me today. I have linked to my most previous uh, first impression Friday video here in the end slate. So feel free to click on that if you want to have a little binge sesh and watch another one. But I will talk to you guys all very soon. Bye.